everyone. It's a real pleasure to be giving um, another one of our connecting uh, with Nile Sandbike webinars. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about a study that looks at remote technologies that can be used for fine tuning hearing aids. Um, so effectively um, looking at uh, clinics from home. And the main focus of um, the webinar today is looking at um, a way to improve access to hearing healthcare. So this has been identified as one of the top priorities in our field. So we can see this in a number of influential documents that have been published. Um, so in Australia, the um, Australian Department of Health published the Roadmap for Hearing Health last year in 2019 and highlighted the um, fact that technological advances will improve hearing outcomes, but made the point that it was essential that um, the, these technical technological advances um, were access accessible and equitable for all. Um, an older um, but still influential uh, report is the NASM Consensus Report on Hearing Healthcare for Adults that was published in 2016 with the um, a whole of the OTC D DTC um, market on the horizon. And it was highlighted here that um, there needs to be some prioritisation um, in terms of research to provide um, an evidence base for innovative delivery models to treat hearing loss. And this was to include um, telehealth or connected health and, and mobile health. And the hearing aid manufacturers um, have been leveraging uh, cloud based technologies to address these over the last couple of years. So these are uh, technologies such as apps to enable remote communication uh, between patients and providers. So in terms of mobile tech for uh, connected health and uh, self-management, um, there are a number of different technologies. Um, I've shown this slide before. And really, um, it's giving a flavour of the technologies that we are um, looking at as part of NAL's Connected Health Research Programme. Um, all of these technologies will be covered in um, our webinar series. Um, and today, as I said, I'm going to be talking about remote um, device, remote hearing aid adjustment. So um, where does this fit along the patient pathway? Well, the um, hearing aids are obviously given at the intervention um, part. So um, this is ensuring that the hearing aids are connected um, to smartphone applications using Bluetooth. But the real um, focus and the um, benefits of this is that um, remote um, assistant uh, devices can provide ongoing support when the uh, patient has left the clinic. So smartphone connectivity has um, really um, mushroomed and really exploded really over the last couple of years. And there are a number of different types of um, applications that um, smartphones are being used for. So they can be used to um, self-fit hearing aids and Brent Edwards is going to be talking about this in a webinar next week. Um, last week I spoke about some of the benefits of use being able to adjust um, the hearing aids and to adjust the sound quality um, using a smartphone app. And as I said today, I'm going to be talking about remote um, delivery and fine tuning um, of hearing aids. And this is a study um, that was led by um, Liz Convery um, with her collaborators Gita Keitzer, Margaret McClelland and Jennifer Grove. Um, Liz is no longer at now, so that's the reason why I'm giving this presentation today. So um, there's been a study to show that unplanned fine tune appointments um, provide the um, or are the largest proportion of um, appointment types. So there is a real advantage to be able to uh, minimise um, trips to the clinic and to be able to remotely fine tune hearing aids. And this is what the Resound um, Smart App does. So just to explain it, we have the, the patient here who's been given the, their hearing aids. If they have a problem, for example, background noise is too, too loud, um, this is, they can um, make a note of this in their smartphone app where there are a series of multiple choice questions that um, address a number of different um, listening um, situations that might cause difficulties. Um, having answered um, the multiple choice questions, addressing what the particular problem is, um, the um, information then goes up through to the cloud um, to the audiologist in the, in the clinic. And the audiologist can adjust the uh, program um, of the um, hearing aids um, accordingly, depending on what the uh, patient has said. And then they can, having programmed, um, set up the program, they can send a package of information down through the cloud um, to the um, patient's smartphone app, which can then program um, the hearing aids. So you have this remote uh, programming of hearing aids. So the study objective was to evaluate post-fitting use of um, the Resound Assist uh, program 
um, with experienced hearing aid users and as they were sort of going about their everyday lives, so looking at real world environments. And there were three different uh, research questions. And the first one was how usable is um, um, resound assist? And the importance of looking at this was that um, usability needs to be assessed um, to ensure that end users can use whatever the application um, is. And at the time this study was carried out a couple of years ago, this was a relatively um, new technology, not widely used. The second uh, research question was um, how does patient provider commun communication via resound assist? compared to face-to-face -face, um, consultation. And now this has um, become a, um, an essential question which is being asked clinically, um, as well as in research as um, we have moved into the um, new COVID era and the use of um, telehealth and connected health really has um, 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 increased a lot over the last couple of months. And then the final research question um, was, are hearing aid fitting outcomes influenced by the mode of client clinician communication? So the study was a six um, um, six week trial. Um, there were two groups. There was an intervention group um, and a control group. There were 15 participants in each and the control group was matched for age, gender and the four frequency um, pure tone average. Um, the intervention group had um, the resound assist, um, but they didn't have the face to face follow up at um, week two, which is typical and part of the standard Australian hearing healthcare um, program. The control group um, had didn't have the resound assist um, app, but did have the um, standard face-to-face follow-up at week two. Um, and of course, both groups had the resound links uh, 3D hearing aids. So looking at the results of the um, intervention group, um, 11 of the um, participants, 11 of the patients were successful in using um, the resound assist app. So all of them used it at least once. There were three um, patients or participants who did not use um, the app. And that was because they didn't feel they had a need to use it in, the, in that six week period. And one of the participants wasn't able to um, access the app at all. So um, they were considered to be um, unsuccessful users. The usability was um, assessed using the telehealth usability uh, questionnaire and there are a number of other different types of um, questionnaires out there which are typically used such as the UMARS um, which looks at uh, mobile um, application um, scores. So in terms of the um, telehealth usability question questionnaire, high score is a poor usability and a, a low score is, is good usability. And you can see that for most of the participants, they rated the usability as, uh, as really quite high, really very high. Um, and even the uh, participant who um, rated usability less well still had a high usability score. Um, at the end of the um, six week study, um, though the hearing aid users were asked a number of different questions and about their use of um, resound assist and the, the results are shown here. So on the, this slide here, this is looking at ease of use of the assist feature and um, all of the um, 11 participants reported that they found um, the app easy or very easy to use. In terms of satisfaction with the range or type of questions, there was a bit more variability here with some people, most people reporting that they were um, satisfied, but there were a group of people who, who um, were only moderately, moderately satisfied with the range and type of questions. And there were similar results um, for the range of the multiple choice um, answers um, that could be provided. In terms of satisfaction with the new settings that were set up using remote assist, Everybody except one um, participant reported that they were very or extremely satisfied. In terms of preferences, whether they preferred um, having their settings um, adjusted using the app or face to face, all of all 11 participants reported that they preferred um, the new settings to be programmed via the app rather than face to face. So um, I think what we're seeing here is very similar to what we've seen with some of the um, studies from now, which shows that once clinicians have used um, telehealth or connected health systems, they're much more likely to use it and that's their, their preference in future. And we're seeing the same kind of results here with patients. And finally, um, all of the um, participants reported that they would be extremely interested in having a similar feature in their hearing aids um, going forward. So there were um, a series of open-ended questions and focus group, and it was a focus group um, that was 
um, conducted as part of the um, usability aspects. And there were three key themes um, that emerged. The first was effectiveness, so how accurately and completely could um, users accomplish their goals. Um, the positive comments are here, the less positive comments on this side. So this patient here says, I managed to install the new settings without difficulty. And this uh, participant says, I had to choose other as my answer to many of the questions since my issue was not covered by the questions that were asked. In terms of um, efficiency, so what um, is the resource burden on users relative to effectiveness? Um, this um, participant here said it was quick to learn um, how to use it, even for me who is not that into technology. And again, time and time again in these kind of studies, we see um, uh, older adults reporting that they're not that proficient at technology, but actually once they're given the opportunity, quite often they can go ahead and, and use it um, really quite well, um, really quite effectively and, and efficiently. Whereas this uh, participant said, I felt I had to spend time typing details of my problem into the text box, as well as answering all the questions. So both of these points here were really reflecting some of the uh, questions um, that we saw on the previous slide around some, um, a little bit of dissatisfaction on, in terms of the uh, questions we were asked. And finally, um, in terms of satisfaction, how pleasant and acceptable is the technology to users? So this person says, I like the look of the app. It didn't look like a game, so it wouldn't be overly enticing for others to look at same meetings. So basically other people wouldn't be distracted by it. And also we've seen it before. You know, it then if it doesn't look like a game, it makes it more socially acceptable to be able to make adjustments to, to hearing aids on the go without looking as though people are just simply playing or fiddling with their hearing aids, uh, fiddling with their smartphones. Uh, whereas this um, patient here said um, red and black can be difficult to read. So that was um, really um, um, sort of a really fitting into the whole usability issue. In terms of the patient provider communication, um, there were a whole bunch of uh, problems that arose because this is what we see in, in typical um, everyday life in, in hearing aid uh, clinics. Um, and there's a whole different um, range of um, issues that were um, raised. Um, and what can be seen is that the uh, range and types of problems are similar regardless of the communication mode, whether it was app based or face to face. Um, we saw that um, um, some of the uh, participants reported, for example, um, that they had difficulties um, or the game, was, the game was too soft or loud. Um, there was feedback or too much background noise and all of these could be um, adjusted using the remote um, assist app. About half the problems um, that people complained about couldn't directly uh, be um, addressed or solved by a uh, fine tuning using the um, uh, using the app. Um, so, for example, here we've got people reporting that they had itchy ear canals or the hearing aids kept slipping out of their ears. And these are the kind of uh, problems that really need to be um, addressed in clinic with the with an audiology. So, requiring face to face care. Um, whereas here there were some problems around maintaining Bluetooth connection or couldn't stream. And I think it's important to uh, bear in mind that there are other alternate means of problem, sol problem solving using online uh, multimedia um, methods, um, for example, the UC to hear online uh, program. So the um, moving to the um, hearing aid uh, fitting outcomes. Um, so there were four um, key outcome measures that um, were obtained um, between the um, for the intervention and the uh, control groups. And there was no significant uh, between these two groups in terms of um, hearing aid fitting and that was measured, sorry, hearing aid benefits and that was uh, measured using the um, AFAB um, questionnaire, hearing aid satisfaction using the saddle. Um, there was no difference in speech discrimination in noise thresholds um, or um, hours of daily hearing aid usage um, using data logging. So no significant difference um, across either of the groups, although it should be noted that the participant um, samples are quite small and um, so it is much more difficult to go and show any significant um, effects. So in conclusion, um, um, looking at the three research questions, the app and feature was um, seen to be usable. Um, the participants found the app was highly usable in terms of its effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction. And the kind of experiences and feedback um, that were gained um, could then be used to uh, build upon and, and refine further uh, technology.
In terms of the patient uh, provider communication, uh, the study showed that there were similar problems regardless of um, the com communication mode used, whether it was face to face or with the app. And um, it's important to say that not all the problems can be solved at a distance um, and some require face to face care or some other kind of um, online uh, support. Um, to enhance um, any of the, or to, to address any of the problems that arise. And then finally, in terms of um, hearing aid outcomes, um, there was shown to be no difference um, between the face to face and the remote um, technology um, model um, with no detrimental effect on hearing aid outcomes. So uh, an app-based communication um, method is a viable way to improve hearing health care accessibility. So what about COVID-19? So everybody's a bit, uh, a bit sick of it now, but we are seeing that uh, the uh, pandemic has actually um, caused a disruption to hearing health care. Um, shown in this um, cartoon um, here that I, I came across about six weeks ago, which is actually really, um, really quite true. So there's some work that we're doing um, and another project that now that uh, David Allen has spoken about in a previous um, webinar. Um, which looked at um, the difference that the, the pandemic has made in terms of one of our studies. So um, we were looking to um, in, increase the use of the um, of a, a, a telecare app. So this is the uh, Signia telecare app, which works very, very similar um, to the um, Jeremy Zand app that I've been talking about um, today. Um, and the red line here is the number of COVID um, infections in Australia. So we were looking to try and um, increase the use of the telecare app. And we had done some work and identified some interventions to do this, um, which we implemented um, just uh, towards the um, end of January, beginning of February. And we started to see, if you see here, this is like increase in um, take up of telecare and increase of um, COVID infections and we can see that um, when we introduced the um, interventions to improve take of telecare we actually did see this and it was all looking pretty good until the pandemic hit and um, we can see that um, from the beginning of March in Australia there was um, uh, as we see in other countries um, a large rapid exponential growth in the number of uh, COVID um, infections and what was really fascinating was when we were continuing to monitor um, the use of the telecare app, our intervention clearly had sort of gone out the window. Um, we saw that um, the uptake of the telecare app pretty much mirrored um, that of the COVID infections. So this was a really interesting finding. What we're seeing is that social distancing has required, um, has required fewer face-to-face -face clinic appointments. And we see this in, in the, um, the results here. So good quality remote services are now needed more than ever. Um, we're actively looking at this at now, uh, working with um, here in Australia. So watch this space. We've got some really interesting um, um, results that we could present over the next um, over the rest of the year. So finally, I'd like to uh, thank the people who uh, conducted the study: Elizabeth Convery, Gita Kaiser, Margaret McClellan, and Jennifer Growth, which was funded by GNV Sound. And just to highlight, um, there's a whole series of soundbite uh, webinars on Connected Health, some of them have already taken place. So David and David and Jeremy this week have given their webinars. Um, Tegan and Paola um, giving it some of their webinars in a couple of weeks time. And I've got a couple more lined up. <laughs>